perhaps we ought to go move on to an, the other topic, another topic, which is what your thoughts are about uh, what I was saying about um, the papacy and oh. the keys. Oh, right. Okay, the keys. Just a thought. Well, okay, well, as far as keys are concerned, yes. Um, there is, is I, I'm, I'm not sure, is it Matthew or, or uh, Lucas? Um, but there is, uh, there is a statement that um, Pharisees had the keys to heaven, but they kept entrance to, 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 to heaven uh, for themselves and for the other people. So from, that, uh, from, from, from this uh, 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 part of the scripture, we understand that the keys also were given to scribes and Pharisees. Not only to Kephas, not only to uh, the the, um, the person that you mentioned earlier in Isaiah, yes. Uh, yes, who, Eliakim. Eli Eliakim, yes, I keep forgetting these uh, names. But also, Pharisees and scribes had the keys, yes? Keys of knowledge, keys of... Mm. of, of well, there's a, there's a file, I can find it. That's yeah. a figurative way of speaking with the Pharisees. But even, even, even if you call it, uh -huh. they had real keys. Arnold said, the keys will be taken from you and will be given yes, to the yes. generation yes, that yes, produces yes. the... Yes, uh, but, the yes, but were, they taken, were they taken from Nicodemus? Were they taken from Paul? Both of them were Pharisees. No, they're not. They're not. They're taken from the ones who, uh, re, uh, who, who did not believe in Jesus. But they're not taken from, from Nicodemus and not, not from Paul. No, conclusion, is, conclusion is that they had the keys. I mean, Paul, uh, Paul had the keys just as much as, well, as Peter. This is about speaking generally about the wicked generation to uh -huh. which Nicodemus and, and Joseph of Adamantia did not belong. Far from it, yes. Well, according to Orthodox teaching, at least in the Coptic Church, but I think it's in all the Orthodoxy, the keys, the key to heaven is is cross. That's what key is. Uh, if you, if someone wants to get to heaven, then must accept the cross. Must accept the cross because, first of all, cross is that uh, that tree uh, of eternal life through the body and blood of Christ, who is the fruit, okay, given to humanity, uh, and also understanding that uh, this comes from accepting the faith uh, that uh, Jesus accepted, the, 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 the pain of the cross, and we've got to follow that example. This is the key, not Peter, not Rob, Roman Catholic Church. But he is holding the pardon. cross. Peter and no. the Pope is holding the cross. Oh, yes, cross of course they are. No. And yeah. he is identifying. Yes, now, in that way. Peter, uh, uh, another point is that Peter was in the position of, uh, of, of primacy or honor because he was the oldest one. He was the only married one and the only one who had children. Now, in, uh, in, uh, in Judaism, in uh, Jewish society, uh, somebody who's married and who's got children is always more honored than, than a teenager. Uh, someone who's 19, 20, like Matthew maybe, all, all, they are very young, these people. Uh, and they're not married. Peter was the only married and the only one with children. That's why he, he, he had the primacy of honor. That was not the only reason. Oh, well, when it comes to, when it comes to Synod, Council of, of uh, Jerusalem, 49, 40, uh, 50, who was, who was making, uh, announcing the decision? Was it Peter? No, it was, it was James. It was James. He was leading, he was leading the council. We don't, we don't um, doubt that. What we say is that each, the Pope it's not, it's not that the Catholic Church has one bishop for the whole world. There, there are bishops in every part of the world and they have their own, um, they're, they're a sovereign in their own region, their own diocese. And when Pope Benedict came here, for example, in 2010, he's coming to, to um, Cardinal Vincent Nichols, for example, yes. or uh, hey, Archbishop Nichols then. Yeah. And he's a guest, the Pope is a guest of the Archbishop. Yes. The Archbishop is still sovereign in his diocese. Yes. So if there's an announcement to make, it would still be proper for the Archbishop to make it, even yes. while the Pope was there. Yes. So James is the head of the Jerusalem church. Yes. No doubt about that. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a head above James. So when the Jerusalem church is meeting and speaking in Jerusalem, then it is for James to utter the final statement. But if you read the read the, the um, description of what happens in that council. Mm. 
you see that when Peter gets up to speak, everybody falls silent. Mm. And they listen to Peter, saying. and then mm. Peter finishes at his own time, mm. and then James affirms what Peter has said. Mm. Now, this isn't saying um, there, there could be ever any conflict between James and Peter. It's just that it's totally in accord with Catholic ecclesiology, that there's a, a bishop in his diocese, mm. and yet there's a head above the bishop. In fact, I don't know how, I'm not as familiar with how the system works in, in the East, but the Metropolitan will might come to a bishop's diocese, mm. if it's called a diocese, mm. in, in, the, in say, in the Greek Orthodox Church mm. or the Russian Orthodox Church, and I'm sure he won't simply start telling no, the no, bishop what to do. There's this acceptance yes. of a man's jurisdiction in his own bishopric. Yes, yes. Uh, so that's, that's that. When it comes to the keys, once again, I have to say, I think that you can speak of the cross being the key in a, in a, in a very real sense, but there's a specific, specific sense in which Jesus gives the keys to the kingdom of heaven, to Peter alone. When you say Peter was the only one who was married, that isn't said in the text. It is affirmed that he's married in the text, but we're not sure about the status of other apostles. We can say John being a boy, pretty much a boy, not married, and Judas dies, you get the family he was not married, but the others we just can't be sure about. So I'd say that putting the marital status to one side, the, the sheer blunt facts in St. Matthew's Gospel is that Jesus expressly <coughs> gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter and tells him and says, upon this rock, and it's Kepha in Aramaic, and Kephas is the name of Peter, as St. John tells us in, I think, chapter 1, verse 21, but I could be wrong because I'm never good with the verses. So he's the one upon whom the church is to be built. He or, or his faith, no, I'm, even I'm, if Protestants are followed I'm going to this. cut in now. Yeah, According on. to Ephesians, uh -huh. yes, you've got the foundation of the church, which is, which, which is built on a, num on a number of rocks. The same plan ex with the cornerstone in the, in, in the person of Jesus. Exactly the same uh, plan of the foundation is in Kings 3, I think, when there is the foundation of the Temple of Solomon. It says that the, it's written that the foundation of the, uh, of the Temple of Solomon is built on, uh, on precious stones, and these precious stones are the, the, the prophets. Exactly the same um, architecture. Exactly the same architecture which is in Ephesians. So, and the temple, and so, and the New Jerusalem in the Book of Revelation. Yes. Precious stones. Yes. And the stones, prophet, and the names form. of the of the apostles, yes, the prophets, yes, and all. Yes. So, plural form. carry on anyway. So not Peter, not Peter, but all the prophets, all the apostles. Where is the claim coming from then? That is on Peter. I mean, is it a tectonic plate? No, it's not. I mean, this is another twist of Rome. They're twisting the words. There is a clear, very clear plan of how the church is to be built, and it's plural form: stones, precious stones, uh, prophets, apostles, right, holy men. Not just Peter. It is twisting. It is manipulation. It, what it is actually, I'll just read it because it's uh -huh. Jesus' own words. So you know, mm -hmm. may as well see what he says. Okay. Now this is after Jesus has confessed. After Peter confessed Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One, Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the powers of death shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So this is a statement of Peter by Jesus. It's hard to twist it when we say it means Jesus is telling Peter something special about him that is not said about others. What he said about the others in, in chapter 18, around verse 17, is they shall bind and loose as well. So the apostles, the whole, all the apostles together, have the power to bind and loose because Jesus says that in chapter 18 mm -hmm. but Peter on his own has the power to bind and loose and the and the keys of the kingdom of heaven because they don't get the keys to the kingdom of heaven if we take the gospel seriously Matthew's deliberately written what he's written mm -hmm. it says these things not us mm -hmm. and we draw our conclusions accordingly 
Yes, okay. Uh, Paul, Paul is one of the apostles, and he, and had, carry the, on. he had the keys. Yeah. He had the keys because he was a Pharisee, the same with Nicodemus. How do we know it? We know it from Matthew. Uh, scribes and Pharisees had the keys. Yeah. And the carry problem on. is that they did not use them properly. The only Pharisees that we are aware of who, who used them properly was Nicodemus and, 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 and Paul, but I'm sure there are others as well who converted. So that's the counter-argument to the claim that only, only Peter had the keys, nobody else. I mean, the uh, Halaic authority, mm -hmm. yes, uh, 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 which, is, uh, which is present in, the, in, in Judaism is is uh, uh, about having keys to uh, uh, understanding of God's will. And every uh, scribe, every uh, uh, Pharisee had, had this knowledge of what God expects humans to do, believers to do. It's just that they didn't use them properly because they're looking after their own benefits and, 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 uh, and not, not teaching properly as they should. But that's their choice, that's their wrong decision. The fact is that they had that knowledge. Now when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, to, 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 to the foundation, uh, you know, uh, upon which uh, you, you believe uh, uh, the church is built, there cannot be place for contradiction in the Bible. If, if it's written somewhere else, in two or, or three places, that the foundation consists of a number of stones, Jesus will not contradict that, saying that only Peter is. He didn't say only Peter. He says upon which. He doesn't say only. Well, exactly. Yeah. He's just one there of many stones. Yes, yeah. it's not yeah. only. These things are mutually complementary. They are complementary. Yeah, see. Yes. So you you can't yes. say Peter is yes. not uh, having primacy. Mm -hmm. Neither can you say that the apostles, together with Peter, have mm -hmm. the keys. Exactly. To yes. One doesn't exclude the other one. They're yes. complementary. It's very important yes. uh, principle. Yes. Okay. See, the, the, the point really, in terms of Peter's primacy, in those clear words of Jesus, is that he's, when Jesus says, I will give you the keys, mm -hmm. the keys, that is, what it, whatever the keys are, whatever the keys are, these are being given to Peter, not to anybody else. So only Peter will have these keys. Otherwise, he'd be saying, I will give you a key or some keys, whereas there'd be other keys that other people have. The keys to the kingdom of heaven are exclusively given to Peter. There may be, there may be keys to other things, why keys to teach. But why exclusively? Is it? Let, 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 I'll, just, I'll just finish the point. I, I know you've gotten to come back, and I know you will come back, so it's all right. But there could be keys to other things like teaching and so on. However, just to come into the early Christian writers, just a few, because I could go on too much. St. Cyprian of Carthage, AD 251. The Lords and Carthage is of course in North Africa, so it's a long way from Rome where the Romans can actually uh, strong arm him. <laughs> Mind you, of course, 251 is before, before the peace of the church, when all the church is persecuted by Rome still. So, so the church couldn't, Peter couldn't strong, the Pope couldn't strong arm anyone at that stage. The, Cyprian says, the Lord says to Peter, I say to you, he says, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. End quote. On him, Cyprian continues, he builds the church, and to him he gives the command to feed the sheep. And although he assigns a like power to all the apostles, yet he founded a single chair, and he established by his own authority a source and an intrinsic reason for that unity. If someone does not hold fast to this unity of Peter, can he imagine that he still holds the faith? If he should desert the chair of Peter, upon whom the church was built, can he still be confident that he is in the church? And that is Cyprian on the unity of the Catholic Church, far, far away from Italy let alone from Rome. I'll give you one more because it's not fair to keep you um, hanging on, but listening to me. St. Ambrose of Milan, AD 388. The Novationist heretics have not the succession of Peter, who holds not the chair of Peter, which they rend by wicked schism, 
And this too they do, wickedly denying that sins can be forgiven even in the church. Whereas it was said to Peter, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound also in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed also in heaven. That's St. Ambrose of Milan on penance, chapter 17, 33. So I, I quote them to show that it's not just modern Catholics who say, oh, the keys are given to Peter and the Pope has a special place. It goes back to men outside of Italy, uninfluenced by this maybe a Roman patronage. It's a well, well and ancient belief.